recorded by more video cameras than I can count. Um, there's one there, one there, one there, one there. Maybe one over there. Um, yeah, so. All right, um, I, I think we're gonna get started. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Um, I want this to be a high level debate uh, and you know something that we can have as a recording, something that lays out uh, the case for Bitcoin versus Bitcoin Cash. Um, I, I think my opponent has uh, ha has done a lot of stuff. Uh, let me let me just uh, like sort of prep everything, and then we'll we'll get started after I tell you what the format's going to be. Uh, we're going to try a Lincoln Douglas style debate. Uh, Roger claims that he doesn't want to agree to that or something, then that's fine. I'll just I'll just finish. But no no, I, you can you can you can go ahead. No no. I have one question. This, this is what Roger does. All right, but can you can you sit down, please? Can, can, I, I'm doing an introduction. Can you can you? Can this is not part of the ten minutes. I'm just trying to do the introduction. I just want to introduce the format, and then and then I will get started. Okay. So uh, I, 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 it's going to be ten minutes me, ten minutes Roger, five minutes me, five minutes Roger, five minutes me, five minutes Roger. Roger. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be about forty minutes, and then if we have time afterwards, we'll start asking each other questions. But there is only one mic, so there's no interruptions or anything like that. Like you just tried. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll keep it civil. I want to keep it at a higher level. I think there's way too much Jerry Springer and not enough Supreme Court. So, anyway, that, uh, that's, that's, that's what I would like to see. All right, so I would like to get started. If somebody has a timer, um, just just make sure, uh, like somebody show me a timer thing. Okay, ready? Roger, it's not your turn. It's not your turn, Roger. No, I just introduced the turn tournament. Either. It's, it, okay, it's not your turn. And we, I just, I think everyone knows who we are. I, I don't think we need to. Do. I'd like one minute for an introduction as well, please. I think that's fair. Yeah, one minute. Yeah, I, I, I want just the debate. I don't want. I don't want to. You can do a, a one minute introduction of who you are. I just introduce the format. That's it. Okay. Hey, can you not interrupt, please? Sit down, please. Sit down, please. Do you want to debate me or not? Okay, then sit down. I introduce the format, not me. Sit down, Roger. Who are you right. actually? You know what? what are, if you if you don't want to debate me, you can get off the stage. Jimmy, who are you? I have a loud voice. All right, so this is this is exactly what I expected to happen to somebody that's that's like this. Hey. Where is the moderator? I had one minute to introduce the format. I didn't do anything else. Okay, you could you could. I, I, I just said it's Lincoln Douglas. I already introduced the format. If you don't want to, Roger, Roger. Here's another microphone. Then, then I am I, I, I am refusing to do the debate if there's two mics. I will, when we start the debate, we'll have one mic. But I'll have one minute to talk about the format. So hard, bro, bro, I'm off to you. So here's what happened. I'll spend one minute going over it. I arrived at the debate. Hey, when are you going to stop using Bitcoin Core? I don't own it. It's not your turn, sir. It's right. It's not yours either. So now we have chaos. Oh, yeah. It's you. If Jimmy doesn't want to debate, I'd be happy to debate you as well. And anyhow, in regards to the format, you're interrupting me, Jimmy. I didn't interrupt you during your one minute. You did your mic. Anyhow, I agree to the format of Jimmy, but I'd like to point out and was told to me at the time I arrived here. 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 5 minutes, just like he asked, and I will. All his notes here that he prepared in advance, nothing was told to me about that in advance whatsoever. So if anybody's ambushing anybody, it's Jimmy. We'll give one microphone on the stage so nobody can interrupt, and everybody can hear what they say. So Jimmy, I yield the rest of my time to you, and I won't interrupt you. You have 10 minutes to say whatever you want, Jimmy. Your turn. Come on down, Jimmy.
Marco. This is this is exactly why nobody likes to debate Roger because he he does stuff like this. Anyway, who has the timer, please? All right. Uh, looks like the phone page flew away. There's no mic? All right. So if he, if, he, if he tries to interrupt me again, I will walk off stage. I will not debate him ever again. And that will be it. Because I think he's, he likes to do this. This is his, uh, his thing. Uh, all right. Anyway, I, I think it's his part, part of the game. All right, first I'd like to thank the organizers of this cruise and everyone at the conference. Um, and believe it or not, I'd like to thank Roger because he's done a lot for Bitcoin, especially early on. And, uh, and you know, we may be debating today, but I actually like what he does for the cause of liberty. In that regard, I think we need less government intervention. Anyway, is a fiat money. Bitcoin Cash is a fiat money. You may be thinking at this point that I'm trolling or exaggerating. I'm not, I'm stating a fact. To prove this to you, let's look at what fiat means. According to the Merriam-Webster dictionary, fiat is a command or act of will that creates something without or as if, without further effort, arbitrary order. Thus, a fiat money is a money created from an act or act of, uh, a command or act of will that creates something without or as if without further effort, an authoritative determination, or an authoritative or arbitrary order. My contention here today is that Bitcoin Cash is a money very much along these lines. Now, as I said before, I admire Roger's efforts to liberate us from government authoritarianism. We are agreed on the need to be liberated from government paternalism. However, there are two ways that you can combat government authoritarianism. First is to get a new person to be the central authority. The second is to actually decentralize that power. And Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash take different paths to doing this. Bitcoin is classically liberal, anarcho-capitalist, and Austrian befitting its cypherpunk roots. It's a sound money. Bitcoin Cash is interventionist, paternalistic and Keynesian befitting its corporate roots and is a fiat money. So let's start with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a decentralized hard money. Bitcoin is all about self-sovereignty over your own money befitting its cypherpunk roots. There is no central authority. Each individual runs what software they want, what features are utilized, and which use cases are prioritized. In other words, Bitcoin is decentralized. Bitcoin is money for people who want property rights over their money. The economic philosophy is Austrian in the sense that there are no central authorities intervening in the marketplace. In Bitcoin, the market figures out solutions to any perceived problems. There is no central authority telling everyone, we know what's best for you. Each person gets to choose based on rules that are stable and immutable. This makes Bitcoin uncensorable and without a single point of failure or control which another entity can co-opt. There is no governance in Bitcoin because governance is another way of saying centralized control. The governance failure of Segwit2x was in fact a demonstration of this feature. Users are sovereign over their own money. Bitcoin is unique in this regard as every other altcoin has a single point of failure or control which can be co-opted by another entity. And users really aren't sovereign over those tokens. This makes Bitcoin uncensorable and without a single point of failure or control, which another entity can do. Bitcoin Cash is a fiat money. 
Bitcoin Cash rose out of Bitme. Bitcoin Cash is centralized with an elite group that determines a roadmap. They determine what will be implemented and what will not through authoritarian hard forks. These are forced upgrades decided by a central authority that everyone must follow in order to stay on Bitcoin Cash. These hard forks mean that at a minimum, the economic incentives change. They pick the winners and losers. The economic philosophy of Bitcoin Cash is Keynesian and that central authorities intervene to spur innovation or solve problems. The method of payment use case has been subsidized by central authorities through large blocks despite all market signals to the contrary. My opponent says things like transactions should be free as if they're entitlements. The smart contract use case has also been subsidized by central authorities despite there being very little utility or demand for such a thing. Bitcoin Cash is paternalistic. And this leads to power struggles like we're seeing now. Bitmain and Craig Wright are now embroiled in a fight over which direction to take Bitcoin Cash. They will probably end up splitting Bitcoin Cash to at least two different forks, possibly even three. Bitcoin Cash is not a network where users are sovereign. It's controlled by the central authorities. This makes Bitcoin Cash very difficult to build on unless you happen to have the central authorities' cooperation as the incentives keep changing. It's no wonder my opponent is marketing constantly on its behalf. For example, you can see all the Bitcoin.com and Bitch Please t-shirts all over the place here today, as well as banners and uh, similar things happen at every blockchain conference around the world. Bitmain is the central bank of Bitcoin Cash. Bitmain has tried to maintain a peg to their reserve currency, Bitcoin, and has failed. Bitmain has failed to keep the peg at 0.15 Bitcoin, 0.12 Bitcoin, and recently capitulated the 0.1 Bitcoin level. This is a central bank selling its reserves to keep a peg to another currency. What's worse, much like a central bank, they seem to be running out of reserves, and Bitcoin Cash will finally float on the market instead of having the artificially inflated value that it has now. Bitcoin Cash is a fiat money and their main appeal is that they'll be better than the fiat central bankers that you already know. The promise of Bitcoin Cash is governance as a benevolent ruler versus granting you actual self -sided. This is the major difference between Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash and it's the reason why Bitcoin Cash is no different than any other altcoin. Which brings me to my last point. Bitcoin Cash has no reason for its existence. There are already lots of altcoins that do what Bitcoin Cash does. Like Bitcoin Cash, they are centralized and many are superior as methods of payment. My opponent in our last debate brought up that altcoins don't have the same history as Bitcoin Cash and that the ledger in Bitcoin Cash has Bitcoin's history. But this too is a spurious argument. Having the same ledger merely means that there it was an involuntary airdrop to the Bitcoin holders, nothing more. Besides, there are 74 different hard forks of Bitcoin at this moment, including Bitcoin Gold, which has a different proof of work, governance, and a roadmap. Bitcoin Interest, which has a proof of stake. Bitcoin Private, which has Bitcoin privacy, uh, which has privacy and fungibility. Lightning Bitcoin, which allow for ultra-fast transaction settlement on the order of seconds. Bitcoin Clean, which is supposedly environmentally friendly. And many other non-trivial hard forks like Bitcoin Diamond, Super Bitcoin, Bitcoin X, BitCore, Bitcoin 2X, Bitcoin File, Bitcoin Atom, Bitcoin Vote, Bitcoin World, Bitcoin Pay, Bitcoin Faith, and my personal favorite, Bitcoin God. That one really makes wants to make it clear to you that they are the central authority. All of them have a roadmap, non-negligible value, and interesting features, all while preserving the history of Bitcoin. Like Bitcoin Cash, they require us to give up our self-sovereignty over our own money in exchange. Instead of verifying, the overlords of these forks want us to trust them. And this is the main value proposition behind every hard fork in altcoin. It's a bet on the people in control. This is why so many of them, including Bitcoin Cash, spend so much money on marketing and what's essentially propaganda. They want us to trust them and not verify anything on our own. My opponent has spent enormous amounts of money promoting Bitcoin Cash, doing interviews with anyone and everyone, debating anyone who will debate him, even ambushing people like me, TMZ style, and saying things like Bitcoin, is the, Bitcoin Cash is the real Bitcoin while continuing to hold Bitcoin, and the flipping is inevitable without willing to back those up, words up with bets. He continues to spout kooky conspiracy theories about Blockstream, Gilderberg, Gavin Andreessen, Mike Kern, and private forum censorship. 
That is the behavior of a used car salesman trying to sell his wares, not someone that's being honest. Bitcoin Cash is centralized with a small group that makes all the decisions for everyone else. Bitcoin Cash is paternalistic and imposing particular use cases no matter what the market says. Bitcoin Cash is Keynesian instead of uh, which is Keynesian in intervening instead of letting normal market forces play out. Bitcoin Cash is a fiat money. So once again, the format for this was kept secret from me before the event. The subject matter to be discussed in the format was kept secret from the event, before, the, before this event. And my goodness, what a bunch of nonsense from Jimmy. And I'm looking forward to refuting every single one of it, especially towards them when I can ask you some direct questions. But one of the final things I heard, because I didn't have any notes to take during the, the time there, he said that I'm not willing to make a bet to back up my predictions about Bitcoin Cash overtaking Bitcoin. Well, I have an offer for Jimmy on that. I'll bet a million dollars equivalent in whatever cryptocurrency you want that within 10 years, Bitcoin Cash will have a larger market cap than the BTC version of Bitcoin today. I yield the rest of my time to you, Jimmy, and I look forward to the question and answers at the end. Well, that, that, that is a great offer, um, and I want to... Yeah, so he, he, he didn't want to take his time, which means that I think he's more or less conceding his points. Um, I don't know. Whatever he wants to say is fine, and this is a format that he's obviously trying to subvert for his own benefit, and he wants to do TNT style, Jerry Springer style stuff instead of actual arguing his point. So he doesn't seem to have a point, so I will I will continue here. Um, if you'd like a pen and paper, yeah, here's my pen. Write it down, write it down, honey. I want this to be fair, but uh, if, you, if you don't want to take that fairness, that's fine. Okay. All right. So he, he didn't refute any of my points. I will say that Bitcoin Cash is very much centralized. He doesn't want to refute them, so he just calls them nonsense, which is a way of just dismissing the entire thing, right? But Bitcoin Cash is very much central. It's the development team uh, for Bitcoin Cash is incompetent, but they nevertheless make choices for the entire community. The emergency difficulty adjustment that started the whole thing was a complete disaster. And uh, you know, it, it caused miners to come in extremely close, uh, extremely close blocks and, uh, and eventually led to another hard fork. Um, their hard fork earlier this year uh, had a consensus bug, which is the worst possible type of bug you can make. It would have split the network in two and it would have been very easy to double spend. The governance process of Bitcoin Cash is simply centralized. There's an elite group that decides what the users must agree to. They listen to the users, but ultimately they make the decisions. This is evident in, the, in that the governance process is not at all transparent and the roadmap is decided by an elite group. I mean, they're fighting about it now. Craig Wright versus Bitmain, right? Jihan versus Craig, or Amory versus Craig, or I, I don't know who the other people are, but uh, I think it's Calvin or something like that. But they're, they're infighting. What's that? Calvin Air. Yeah. The, there's a lot of infighting because it's centralized. They're looking to gain that power, right? If there was nothing to fight over, they wouldn't be fighting. They're fighting over who gets to control the coin. And, uh, and this is what Bitmain and Craig Wright are doing. And ask yourself, why, why is an obvious scammer like Craig Wright doing in this community? Why is he there? He's there because he's get, gonna gain something out of it. He's there because he can go scam. Scammers go where they can scam. And as I've said, there are lots of altcoins that are central. There are lots of other choices that are faster, more private, easier to use if you're using, looking to use centralized coins. Bitcoin Cash doesn't add anything new. But it has the word Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and this is one of the things that you have to be very careful about when you have a centralized authority. Because in Bit, it, it, with Bitcoin Cash, the central power needs to be lobbied to make any changes. 
And Bitcoin Cash does not give users sovereignty over their own money because the, the people that are in charge get to do, do whatever. And that's governance by fiat. And every single fiat money ever has inflated, okay? has been devalued, has been debased. And this is due to the moral hazard that exists in fiat currency. The central authority can print more money. It's the epitome of hubris to believe that what's happened to every other fiat currency won't happen to you, All right? Just trust us, we're the paragons of virtue. We won't print any more money. Yeah, right. My opponent's argument basically comes down to trust us, All right? Trust us, we won't inflate it. This has to be said over and over again by every single government. Okay. So uh, thank you to this lady for letting me borrow her pad to take a couple of notes. I'd like to point out that Jimmy started his rebuttal by saying that I didn't address any of the points that he made. Well, I concluded my last little point with offering a $1 million bet challenge to Jimmy that the market cap of Bitcoin Cash will be higher than the market cap of BTC in 10 years from now. He didn't address that at all. You won't have a million dollars then, brother. And if, if the million dollars is too much for him, he can name the amount he wants to bet. So uh, I'm more than happy to bet whatever amount you would like on that. Uh, another point that he made there was Bitcoin Cash being centralized. And he's saying that he said Bitcoin Cash is centralized. And then he spent a whole bunch of time talking about a whole bunch of people like Craig Wright and Calvin Ayer and Omri Sachet and ABC and Bitcoin Unlimited. And they're all fighting with each other. If Bitcoin Cash is centralized, then why are a bunch of people fighting with each other over it? The very fact that there's a whole bunch of fighting going on shows that it's not centralized. And the very fact that the BTC community has expelled anybody from their community that disagrees with the roadmap and literally kicked them out of the community by silencing their voice and deleting their posts and banning them from our, our Bitcoin on Reddit and BitcoinTalk.org. The fact that they've been able to do that and have the power to do that, if anything, that shows that the BTC coin is the one that's centrally controlled with the iron fist of totalitarianism. Whereas Bitcoin Cash, if you go on our BTC or the Bitcoin forum at Bitcoin.com, You'll see all sorts of people arguing about all sorts of things and lots of disagreement and sometimes it's a little bit much because there's so much arguing stuff going on. But that's the sign of a society or a community that's willing to accept considering new ideas and willing to accept that maybe, maybe I don't know the absolute best thing for the world. Maybe other people have ideas too. Maybe I should stop and listen to them. And maybe I shouldn't delete other people's posts if I disagree with them. And that's the Bitcoin Cash community. They are open to new ideas. They're open to learning new things. Whereas the BTC community will literally delete your posts on the discussion platforms they control and ban you from their community. And so that's why there's consensus within BTC because they've kicked out anybody that disagrees. Another thing he was talking about, Bitmain versus Craig, Craig Wright. Well, again, if Bitcoin Cash is so centralized, why are all these people fighting over it? And the biggest nonsense that I managed to take notes of that he was talking about was uh, was fiat. He said Bitcoin Cash is fiat. Well, the definition of fiat is money by decree. And the very, very essence of cryptocurrencies is that nobody is forcing anybody to use them. If you don't like BTC, don't use it. If you don't like BCH, don't use it. If you don't like Monero Dash, Zcoin, Zcash, take your pick. If you don't like them, don't use them. That's the very opposite of fiat, because with fiat, with dollars and euros and yen, the government say you have to use our money, you have to pay us taxes in those money, and if you don't, we'll lock you in a cage. That's what fiat is. Cryptocurrencies are not fiat currency. Cryptocurrencies are the currency of freedom. And I have two more minutes to continue, and we promise no interruptions, so we'll wait until the timer tells me my time is up. Thank you very much. And I, have, I hear two minutes, two minutes from here, I believe he started, two minutes left. So I want to tell people a little bit of a story, and hopefully I'll finish it within two minutes, of why I'm so excited, not just about Bitcoin Cash, but cryptocurrencies in general across the world. And it's because they have the ability to undermine every single government on the planet's control of people using fiat currency. And I don't care if it's Bitcoin Cash, Dash, Monero, Zcoin, you take your pick. Whatever cryptocurrency works as cash, for people all over the world is the one that I'm gonna support because I'm sick of people 
being forced to pay for wars all over the world, pay for locking people in jail, for smoking a plant that makes them feel happy, or having a white powder that makes them feel happy. I am sick of that. And cryptocurrencies that are usable as cash have the ability to strip government's power away from them. And I don't care which cryptocurrency it is, but the reason I'm busy promoting Bitcoin Cash every day is because I think Bitcoin Cash has the best chance of doing that because it's the biggest user base. The transactions are fast, cheap, and reliable. It has a community that's open to allow people to discuss these ideas. Bitcoin Cash is the cryptocurrency that has the ability to bring more freedom to the entire world than any other cryptocurrency in the world. And that's why I'm busy promoting Bitcoin Cash today. I yield the rest of my time to you, Jimmy. He, he told me that he didn't uh, he, he, he didn't stack the audience at all. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, uh, so let me let me go through a couple of things. Uh, with the one million dollars, ten years is way too long. I'm not going to go try to track you down, Roger, in ten years. But if you shorten that time frame, I'd be glad to take that. Bet. Um, all right. So first thing he talked about was uh, about fighting. Um, I think Republicans and Democrats fight quite a bit in this centralized in the centralized system that's called the U.S. government. So I don't think that argument holds water whatsoever. Any other, every other political place also does the same thing. Um, all right, and he he defined fiat as legal tender laws. That's not what it means. It means a centralized authoritarian money. Okay, and that's what Bitcoin Cash is. It's an authoritarian centralized money. All right, so let's talk about a few things. You talked about Gavin, uh, I, I, presumably Gavin, Mike, and Jeff, uh, about how they got kicked out of the community. Gavin, Mike, and, and, and Jeff were all contributors to CORE, and I am grateful for what they've done. All three are still free to contribute. I suspect they don't want to because they don't have the clout that they once did, and that's entirely on them for not producing, not on CORE. What my opponent is really objecting to is the fact that these individuals don't have the influence that they all once did. Having a good reputation in the core community is not something you are entitled to for the rest of your life. Bitcoin Core is not a bureaucracy where you can coast, do very little, and not get fired. Bitcoin is a meritocracy, and that means that you not only have to keep doing good work, but you also have to get better as the code and developer quality improves. These three contributors simply didn't meet the rising bar that other contributors clearly set. That was most of the reasons why these three lost their reputation. There were other contributing factors. Mike and Gavin wanted to make Mike the benevolent dictator for life of Bitcoin. They wanted to centralize around Mike Kern, and when the rest of the community said no, Mike rage quit. Gavin enabled a scammer like Craig Wright through techno technical incompetence in not being able to check a simple signature. Jeff started doing ICOs and altcoins. They had good reasons to lose their reputation. Whatever the reason, they lost their cloud and are no longer contributing, though they are free to. In Bitcoin, nobody gets a position for life as in a centralized system. What my opponent is really objecting to is the meritocracy. You only get influence if your contributions are useful. Influence is hard to earn and easily lost in a meritocracy. The reason my opponent is unhappy about these three developers not having influence is that they're more open to his ideas, and this has reduced his influence. He's identified this as one of the reasons he lost the debate. He, and really, he can't seem to face the prospect of being wrong. And being heard in a private forum is not an entitlement. A lot of people are frustrated with our Bitcoin, and that's why it's not nearly as popular as it once was. I, including me, I don't go there anymore. That's the free market at work. Getting silenced sucks, but unless the one doing that silencing is the government, it's not illegal. My opponent seems to think he's entitled to do whatever he wants in a private forum. Does he want the central authority to say that he must be allowed to speak? Does he want to violate the freedom of assembly and force unwilling audiences to listen to him? Once again, we have a sore loser complaining about getting kicked out. Can't possibly be that his ideas are bad. Must be a conspiracy. It's Blockstream or Bilderberg or Jewish bankers or something. The forum moderators are private individuals that decided to exercise the freedom of assembly. Sorry if you weren't made to feel welcome, but that just means your ideas are lost. Not that there's some kooky conspiracy. Complaining about access is what slick salesmen say because it decreases their sales. The censorship is sour grapes at not having access to a private audience. Hell hath no fury like a sore loser. I yield the rest of my time.
So I'd like to point out that uh, I believe after this we get to ask each other some questions back and forth, but Jimmy has quite a stack of notes there that he prepared in advance of today. And it looks like he was just reading from a script and didn't really talk about the things that I was here complaining about. And so nicely done reading from your script. <clears throat> One of the things that he tried to just dismiss out of hand was the censorship happening within the BTC community. If you don't believe me about the censorship, try posting a link to this video on our Bitcoin on Reddit, the most popular discussion platform in the entire world for Bitcoin related things. A, video, a link to this video, I guarantee you will be deleted from our Bitcoin. And that's how strong the censorship to this very day Shani still is. Shani, Shani, because you're mixing up the word Shani, we shun you. It's not censorship, it's Shani. So again, I, I heard a number of other straw men arguments in there that I didn't make today that Jimmy tried to give a rebuttal to. And I heard a lot of talk about crypto Keynesianism and crypto Austrians and that sort of thing. Well, I want to talk a little bit about my Austrian street cred. I've read every single book by Ludwig von Mises. I've read every single book by Murray Rothbard. I've read Henry Hazlitt. I've read uh, Adam Smith from cover to cover, right? I've read just about every single book that was in the laissez-faire books catalog. And this was a paper catalog in the late 90s before they had like their website going. I ordered all of them and I read just about all of them. And you can go and visit Bitcoin.com. We have a list over there of the books that I recommend. We have people talking about it. And I wasn't born a libertarian. It was from reading these books on economics that I realized that government intervention into the economy and government centrally planning things, what size, is what retards the rate of economic growth in the entire world. And in economics, the cap on the block size is called a production quota. So we have a bunch of central planners in the form of the BTC developers centrally planning the amount of block size that the market is allowed to produce, where we have the market all over the world wanting to buy and bid for space within that block. And what we've seen happen, the market finds a way to solve that problem. The market has moved to block space in chains other than the BTC chain. And that's why we saw Bitcoin's market share plummet from nearly 100% down to somewhere in the ballpark of 50% uh, today. And so we hear about crypto Keynesians. Well, I'd like to ask Jimmy, have you read John Maynard Keynes, The General Theory of Money from Cover to Cover? I have. I would like to hear if you have. And if you have, tell me what you learned. And I look forward to beginning our back and forth questions. And I'll be respectful and not interrupt you during your questions. Maybe we can limit each question and answer to 30 seconds. Is that, is that fair for you? Your first answer? OK, whatever I want to do, we heard it. So uh, my question to you, Jimmy. Have you read, you've been talking a lot, making videos about crypto Keynesians. Have you read the, have you, I'll give you the mic, I'll put it here when I'm done. I have, I have two minutes left, so maybe a minute 45. Have you read John Maynard Keynes, The General Theory of Money and Credit, the defining book of what Keynesianism is, which I've read cover to cover. I'd like to hear if you've read it and what you learned from it and what your takeaway from it was. Thank you. Have you listened to the audio book as well? But, for myself personally, I learn much, much more from reading the actual textbook. So your turn, Jimmy. Have you read The General Theory of Money and Credit by John Maynard Keynes? And if no, fine. If not, what did you learn from it? What did you think his uh, goal with that book was? What was he trying to accomplish? I love how he's appealing to his own authority. You have to trust me. I've read every book, and therefore I'm not going to make any arguments. You're just going to have to trust me. That's more or less what his argument comes down to. I'm not interested in gotcha politics, okay? Did you read this one? Did you read this one? That's not what I'm about. I, I, I refuse to answer that question because I think it's stupid. It's not about that. It's about the actual ideas, okay? All right, I'm gonna ask you a question now. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's not gonna be just you and me. I get to ask you a question now. All right, then, then I get to ask her. I get, I get to reply and then he gets to ask the next question. So he just pointed out that we shouldn't even bother reading the primary sources of the things we're talking about. Of course we should read the primary text. Like what sort of nonsense is it to say, don't read the primary text about the stuff we're talking about. Your turn for a question, Jimmy. That's a complete mischaracterization. I said I didn't want the debate to be about that. I didn't say don't read it. This is, this is what a po master politician does. Roger is a very good politician. I would like to ask, do you think transactions should be free forever? I have 
no idea if the transaction should be free forever. I think the market should decide rather than a bunch of economic central planners. That's great, because uh, uh, the, the, the economic central planners are Bitcoin Cash, which basically say method of payment is the exact use case that everyone needs to use. Therefore, we're going to increase the block size to 32 megabytes, most of which isn't used at all. So just want to tell you that, great, you, we agree. So my turn for another question. So Jimmy was just complaining that method of payment is the killer app for Bitcoin or blockchains. Of course it is. That's what made Bitcoin popular from day one. It made Bitcoin this worldwide phenomenon that it is today because anyone could send and receive any amount of money with anyone instantly, basically for free. And that application has been destroyed by central planners on the BTC blockchain. And that's why people like myself and thousands and thousands of other businesses and millions of people around the world have started using other coins like Bitcoin Cash. What do you say? My question, not yours. Thank you very much. What? Do you say to the central planners who have decided that cash isn't the killer application or it shouldn't even be an application on the BTC blockchain? First of all, it's Bitcoin Cash that has the problem because free transactions aren't actually free. Uh, by 2028, three happenings and just 10 years from now, fees will presumably be very low and rewards on Bitcoin Cash will be 1.56 Bitcoin Cash. At current prices, that's about $750 per block. You might be able to sell a coffee on their blockchain, but you're not going to be able to sell anything bigger than like a laptop. That's way too much risk. It's too cheap to do the other uh, do the other thing. So, um, whatever he wants to say, I, like, it, oh, it's my turn to ask a question, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So the question that I have for you is. You seem to quote Satoshi over and over again. Do you think Satoshi is God? What a stupid question. <laughs> there is no God, right? Each individual should be the God of their own life and control their own destiny. And that's what cryptocurrencies are about because it puts you in charge of your own life and your own money and your own destiny. And that's why I'm involved. So uh, what a waste of a question, Jimmy. So my question to you, now that it's my turn again. No, that, you are. I ask you. All right, so uh, <laughs> Satoshi is not God, but he always appeals to Satoshi's vision. Uh, and what, what he's doing is saying this is the original intent, appealing to emotion, not logic. A lot of people don't realize that Satoshi made a lot of mistakes. Op, op check multisig has an off by one error. Um, let's see, so does the difficulty adjustment calculation. The non space in the block header is too small, as is the timestamp. Um, you could tell Bitcoin Cash is incompetent technically because in their hard fork they didn't fix any of that stuff. So a moment ago I took a note when Jimmy was talking about the halving and how we have to limit the block size because the halving and the block reward will go down to try and accurately summarize the BTC. There were 50 Bitcoin. Per block today on the BTC chain, it's somewhere in the ball. The block reward is going up over time, not down. Why do you disagree? The block reward in Bitcoin is going up over time. Bitcoin Cash is the same price as it was about a year ago, so there's no reason to believe that Bitcoin Cash will go up, given that in the one year of its existence, it stayed the same. You just heard it. He ignored almost 10 years of data and tried to cherry pick one year of data. It's very, very clear that as cryptocurrencies become more popular, even if the block reward goes down over time, the, in terms of that particular cryptocurrency, the reward in terms of dollars or fiat, which is what unfortunately most of the world is still denominating everything in today, goes up over time. And so they, limit, they limited Bitcoin's usability in the world to solve a problem that didn't even exist. That shows how incompetent they are economically. So Roger keeps reframing my answer as what he wants me to say instead of what I actually said. I said that Bitcoin Cash has one year of history. I didn't say that it was Bitcoin. That's his belief that Bitcoin Cash is Bitcoin. And he, he wants to add on the nine years of history that Bitcoin has to Bitcoin Cash somehow. This is a manipulation that you're facing, folks. It's somebody that keeps reframing. He's, he keeps saying that I said something that I didn't say. Why do you keep doing that, Roger? Why do you keep like making me sound uh, ma ma uh, like straw manning me by rephrasing what I say to be something completely different than what I actually said? I have some notes, so I hope 
Because my time can start when I start. So I made a list of things that make Bitcoin Bitcoin. Peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, low fee, fast payments, reliable payments, on-chain scaling, non-reversible payments, chain of digital signatures, opcodes enabled, SHA-2361 CP1 vote, longest chain with the most proof of work, cited from the Bitcoin white paper, Satoshi Nakamoto, Bitcoin.org. Bitcoin Cash has all but one of those. BTC today only has two of those characteristics that make Bitcoin. I gave a whole presentation on it yesterday. If you didn't see it, I hope you watch it. And I'd love to see your rebuttal to that. 30 seconds isn't honestly enough time, but please make a video rebutting why I'm wrong. Uh, Satoshi is not God. Okay, and, uh, and what, what, what you're doing is appeal to Satoshi. It's not about logic. It's about, oh, Satoshi knows better than we do. No, the market knows better than Satoshi. Okay, and we don't want to share our property rights. We want to be sovereign over our own money. Bitcoin Cash is centralized. It's a fiat money. They, the elite cabal there controls your money. With Bitcoin, you control your own money. And we're not sharing our sovereignty with anybody, not even Satoshi. So I'm not saying Satoshi is God. I'm saying that certain characteristics define what Bitcoin is. Such things like the very title of the Bitcoin white paper the original Bitcoin.org website, and things the creator of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto, said. That doesn't mean Satoshi Nakamoto is infallible, but if you want to look to what the definition of Bitcoin is, I think those are fantastic, fantastic places to start. And if we look to those places, it's clear Bitcoin Cash has more Bitcoin-ness about it than BTC. And even if you disagree with that, I'm sorry, that's my time, I'll respect it. All right, so I, I just want to point out that what Roger's done over and over again is not answer any of my points, not answer the fact that his coin is centralized. He hasn't really disputed that at all. It's completely centralized. He's just accused Bitcoin of being centralized, which I've disputed. Um, and he continues to uh, appeal to Satoshi after saying, I'm not appealing to Satoshi, and then he just goes on and appeals to Satoshi. So um, this is the kind of logic that we're facing here, is somebody that doesn't really seem to understand that he, uh, like, just sort of spinning things in a way that sound good instead of logic. This is why I wanted the Lincoln Douglas debate. Anyway, um, I think I'm done. Uh, I, I'd like to end things here. Roger, would you like to end? That's my question. Of course not. We still have a half hour to go and I think people are enjoying this, but I think they'd enjoy it a little bit more if we get to talk about some things. Yeah, thank you. So one of the things he said, I'm not even answering his questions, Bitcoin Cash is centralized. Were you not paying attention when I pointed out that Craig Wright is arguing with Calvin Air, is arguing with in-chain people, is arguing with Bitcoin Unlimited, is arguing with Bitcoin ABC, is arguing with me. If a bunch of people are busy arguing and fighting over something, it's not centralized. It's just that simple. Did you not understand that? What's your question? I, I gave a rebuttal to that, and then you didn't. You never. Re, you never. You never answered that. Basically, that's evidence of centralization that there's a power. Anyway, um, I, I think I think we're done. I think we were scheduled to end at around 1:40, and I never agreed to go to 2:30. I just said we have time if we wanted to. And I am sick of this TMZ-style gotcha politics. I'm appealing to my authority. I'm going to read off uh, some stuff and say I, I I know more because I read more than you. So. I, I'm not, not interested in that sort of debate. We have one, two, Tom Banks, everybody. Yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy didn't want to continue, so I, I, want, I want to thank hey, Jimmy. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And while they're switching mics, I'll, I'll give a little introduction. So. Jimmy, Tone, and I have all known each other for a while, and it may be a little bit heated on stage, but uh, I think all of us have some deep down inside. It might not be on the outside, but we have some warm feelings towards each other on the inside. So thank you, Jimmy, and, and thank you, Tone, for... You need a shirt for your microphone? <laughs> and so since, since Jimmy, you know, didn't want to continue, I'll point out, like, there's a bunch of people fighting within Bitcoin Cash. That's a sign that it's not centralized. Right there, like the fact that he denies that is just baffling to me and without putting words in his, his mouth. Okay, he didn't say don't read the primary text, but he seemed to say that the primary texts don't matter. Of course the primary texts matter. Yeah, should we just have a question? Yeah, let's have a question. Right here. You're next. We have one right here. You're next, sorry. Hi, Roger. 
Um, my question is, you're saying that uh, Bitcoin Cash is decentralized because there are a bunch of people of like fighting each other, which is actually good. But what's the difference between that and a board of a company that you know is a centralized company, but it's a bunch of people that's fighting each other? Is it, how, how do you explain? I mean, for that. Yes, the, the board of the, com the company eventually gets to make a decision. If nobody gets 51% of the hash rate or 51% of the economic power to go somewhere, then no decision gets made. So there isn't actually any one person that can be the final arbiter there. So for Bitcoin Cash, you have the company, I mean, you have people debating and, and you know, proposing things, and, but then the community is the one that, that, that's what you're saying, right? And I, I invite anybody to get involved in the Bitcoin Cash community. There's plenty of people to debate and argue with online. There's no shortage of that whatsoever. Thank you. Maybe we'll do All right, ready? This guy comes from we'll start. So one more question, and then we'll uh, we'll see if we can go another thirty minutes. So blockchain, non crypto people into the whole blockchain world. A lot of non blockchain people want to enter this world. But they don't have the means to or the way into it? Uh, answer it uh, less than a minute and then I'll answer it as well. I defer to you first, I'll go second. Right. Um, at the moment, it's I think one of the challenges to get new people into uh, Bitcoin is because a lot of people don't understand what Bitcoin is now because of companies like Bitcoin.com that are trying to sell you a fake Bitcoin like Bcash or Bitcoin Cash, I'll do it for this debate. Um, so I think there's a lot of confusion also, again, people like Roger, who are very instrumental in the early days and getting everyone onto Bitcoin. And there was all this unity pre-2015 when Gavin Andreessen got this crazy idea that the blocks can't scale. Uh, back then, everyone knew what Bitcoin was. Bitcoin had 95, 98% dominance. Everyone was unified. Hey, you gotta accept this currency. It's government resistant, it's censorship resistant, it's great. And right now, you walk up to an average person in crypto and he's gonna try and sell you his ICO. He's gonna try and sell you his currency. He's gonna try and sell you a fake Bitcoin. So that makes it a lot harder. So I have a simple answer. If we want people to use cryptocurrencies, we have to make them useful as currencies. And not just useful as currencies, more useful than every other currency out there in the market, which means fast, cheap, reliable, uncensored payments for the entire world. Bitcoin Cash has it, Bitcoin Core BTC does not. And if you want an actual practical example of how Bitcoin Cash is useful and more useful than other currencies around the world, my favorite website to spend my Bitcoin Cash is purse.io. If you don't know about purse.io, go and visit it today. You can save 30%, 30% on every single purchase from Amazon by using Bitcoin Cash. That means if there's a $50 microphone you want to buy, if you buy it in Bitcoin Cash, it costs $35. 30% off Amazon using Bitcoin Cash. And purse.io is another fantastic example of one of these companies around the world they wanted to use cryptocurrencies as a currency. They paid all of their employees in BTC since the earliest days of Bitcoin. And in December of last year, when the BTC core developers got what they wanted and the fees became high, they were popping champagne celebrating. Businesses like purse.io and bitcoin.com and many, many others around the world were busy switching to Bitcoin Cash because it works as a currency. And today, all of purse.io's employees are paid in Bitcoin Cash. Everybody at Bitcoin.com is paid in Bitcoin Cash. Anybody who wants to use a cryptocurrency as a currency is using Bitcoin Cash, not BTC. All right, uh, so we're done with questions. So can I get five minutes? Yes, you have. Five minutes, okay. So uh, let me tell you guys a story how I got into Bitcoin. It was a few years after Roger. I first heard about Bitcoin from Max Kaiser around 2011. And here's how I heard about Bitcoin. WikiLeaks is about to go down because they can't afford their servers. And it was suggested that WikiLeaks should start accepting. That's when I realized, wow, this is actually something useful. Uh, because it was able to provide a method of funding that was censorship. It was able to... Uh, move without you know, censorship, avoiding credit cards, avoiding PayPal. That was a use case that stuck in my mind. Sure, I didn't run out and spend $100,000 buying Bitcoin at 
able to do that. I guess he ju he jumped on it earlier. Me in. The first quarter of press when I watch people in when people that have saved money all their life they had all confiscates half of your money above a hundred thousand euros and oh my god Bitcoin is unconfiscated away Scalable use case, and I had the censorship resistant use case. At the time, I was following Ron Paul and I was starting to become a gold bug. Um, I kind of liked the idea, but again, working in finance, reading enough of economics, I'm, I was still 50 50. You know, I grew up, I did financial. Uh, uh, the central. Fiat money and credit, I understand that you know our money is depreciating, but we've had this system for the last hundred years. How do I know that we would have the internet today if it wasn't for the central bank system? I don't know. I can't argue what didn't happen. So there is an argument, okay, okay, because it creates should be on a and why the world can primary. the fact that it's now it's great that and are faster and a lot cheaper and scale on chain. scale it on chain with income that the operator of this boat around the Mediterranean. I believe that competent people people are incompetent, those people end up leaving by themselves because they're no longer useful or when they believe that there is a fake Satoshi out there who's a real Satoshi, they need to be immediately removed from making dangerous changes. Okay, now Bitcoin will scale off chain, it will be a better payment mechanism. But if you want a really good payment mechanism today, go use the Venezuelan peso. Nobody wants it. It's great for transactions. The moment you get the peso, you immediately go and buy something. So that's what you want if you want just a payment method. Bitcoin is more than a payment method. Give it some time and it will scale. Thank you, Tom. Sloan, are you happy to have a little more back and forth directly? Okay, great. So, right, take your five minutes and... No, 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 I, I meant a little bit of question and answers back and forth directly. And we'll, we'll do our best not to interrupt each other. So, and I'll say what I think about you thinking if you see a point. Hop right in. Go for it. Feel free. So I'd like to point out that so many of these BTC supporters, they're confused and think that you can separate the store of value from the monetary use case. But it's... Ask yourself, right? If for people that are in Europe, you're using euros as a store of value. If you're in the US, you're using dollars. If you're in Japan, you're using yen. The reason you use those currencies as a store of value is because you can spend them anywhere. If you weren't able to spend euros anywhere or spend dollars anywhere or Russian rubles anywhere, you wouldn't use them as a store of value. And we've seen on the BTC chain, they have intentionally undermined the ability to use Bitcoin to pay for things. And if you undermine the ability to use it to pay for things, you've then undermined its usefulness as a store of value. So those are two sides of the same coin. If you destroy something's usefulness in commerce, you destroy its usefulness to be used as a store of value as well. And that's exactly what's happened on the BTC chain. And he was talking about the BTC bus development took it from nearly 100% market share to all the way down to 35 any other business if you took it from 100% market share to less than half. You'd be fired instantly. And that's exactly what happened with the crypto coin community. 
more than 50% of the capital within the crypto coin ecosystem went to altcoins. That was them firing the, co the uh, firing the BTC developers and showing they don't have confidence in their roadmap. Because ask yourself, you have a cryptocurrency that's fast, cheap, and reliable, or one that's slow, expensive, and unreliable like BTC, you don't have to be a genius. You don't have to have read the primary texts on economics to figure out which one is more useful in commerce, which one is more useful to businesses, and which one has the ability to undermine government's control of the, of the money supply. It's the one that actually works as money. Bitcoin Cash, what say you? Well, I, I do want to say that, uh, Roger, you just referred to Bitcoin as a business. It's not a business. It's a business uh, uh, using it. Uh, 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 you refer to Bitcoin core developers. We agreed we could jump back and forth a little bit, right? right. Sure. And I, 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 refer, rephrase, I refer to businesses using Bitcoin. So, uh, Bitcoin core developers can't be fired because they don't really work for anyone. They work for themselves. Bitcoin is a decentralized protocol. Anybody is welcome to program on it, right? First of all, just because uh, the hype got out of control and people started loving crazy old coins. And I have to say, you were probably responsible for that because I was the one that took a picture of your presentation at Anarchapoco in 2016, where for the first time, you on a big screen showed which old coins you have diversified into. So if I could jump in. I was sounding the alarm because Bitcoin had a 100% market cap in the entire world. It was on track to strip away every government's control over the money supply all over the world much, much faster. We've been delayed by years because of this stupid scaling debate within Bitcoin. And now we have a thousand and one stupid ICOs and altcoins out there. And if this guy's trying to blame me, saying I'm promoting them, no. I want a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash for the entire world so that each individual has control over their own money. Not a bunch of stupid scammy ICOs. Some of the ICOs are good, but a bunch of them are scams. Some of them are horrible. We don't need a thousand one different cryptocurrencies. We need one that works really, really well for everyone all over the world. So this is a bunch of nonsense to try and blame me on the altcoins. I've been Bitcoin's biggest cheerleader from day one. And as Tone admitted, I was a big part of the reason Bitcoin's so popular around the world it is today. Well, guess what? I did it the first time, and I'm doing it again with Bitcoin Cash. So if you like that message, go to Bitcoin.com and get started today. I, I, was a, I was a Bitcoin cheerleader from day one that I got into it, which was a slightly later day one. And I remain a Bitcoin cheerleader, never changing my mind, never suggesting another altcoin, whether it's an altcoin that I believe is a better Bitcoin or not, or even if it had happened to have the same Genesis bot. You see, when people believe in alternate chains, when people believe in alternate chains, if you believe in multiple, whether they're proof of work coins or multiple altcoins, or whether you, if you believe that a split of Bitcoin is a viable alternative, then you do believe in the fiat system of money. Viable is like having not no single hard money at all. There has to be one. The world will migrate to one currency that is decentralized, the way we have only one internet. Hey, Tom, it just won't work. Are you willing to switch to something other than BTC? I have no reason to. BTC is the most decentralized, not only from its development. It has the smartest people. And I, I believe the question, in the development. The question it has the is, are biggest, you willing to switch if there's a reason? Um, if there, if my money is not in Bitcoin, it would be in the S&P 500. So you're not willing to switch to a different cryptocurrency no matter what? Absolutely not, because I believe that Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is miles ahead in its decentralization against any other alternative, that if Bitcoin loses the store of value property, no one will ever believe that another blockchain will ever be better store of value because no matter how, what kind of, no matter what kind of propaganda you have that bitcoin 50% of all bitcoin is in the hands of the very few it is still a thousand times more decentralized than the very few hands that hold any other coin including bitcoin cash yeah. maybe that's a big difference between myself and tone tone and correct me if i'm wrong you're saying that you would never switch to anything other than btc did i get that right as a, de as a decentralized uh, blockchain, I would never put my value. I, I'll use it as a, I'll use it as a transactional currency, but I will never use it as savings. I'll, I'll use it like the Venezuelan Boulevard. Okay, gentlemen, uh, I have been asked to moderate by the organizers. 
We are given about four more questions, so I'm gonna jump in the middle. Every single currency that has the ability to bring more economic that I think has a better chance than Bitcoin Cash control people's money, I will gladly switch to other cryptocurrency and start promoting that. And some people can argue whether or not Bitcoin Cash or BTC is the real Bitcoin. best chance of bringing time and that's why I'm busy promoting it today and if there's another coin that you think has and I'll start promoting that coin but I I think at the moment Bitcoin cash is the best tool the world has at this very moment to bring more economic freedom to the world okay. and that's why I'm here thank you Tone, has a response? Uh, just very quick look about a year ago about a year and a half ago there was a when Bitcoin Cash split, that was pretty much the fifth attempt to hard fork Bitcoin into a bigger block. Look, I'm sorry, Roger, that Satoshi put in a one megabyte block limit. At the time Satoshi put in a one megabyte block limit, he kind of assumed that it would be simple to just make it bigger in the future. But the reality of the situation was that when the Bitcoin core developers did their research and they initially thought about going to a bigger block, they realized that there is no way it was going to happen. You can't force people to update their node. And they knew that the community was going to split. So they made the safe, they made the smart decision not to even try. And what they had to do was find, uh, not to mention that a bigger block is technological, Four attempts. First, there was Bitcoin Classic. Then there was Bitcoin XT. Then there was Bitcoin Unlimited. How then many Bitcoin... tell us about the bait and switch with Segwit Two X? Then, oh, I'll, 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 I, can, I can mention that. Um, then there was a uh, Bitcoin ABC came out. And then eventually, Bitcoin Cash split following Bitcoin ABC's roadmap. Time when it, what, I'm sorry, what, when when the split was happening, they had eighty or ninety percent of the mining power. They had most of the they had most of the media on their side. They had most of the businesses on their side and the users still won. The users wanted a free coin that was not gonna be controlled by the miners and the businesses, the nodes won. I can talk about Segwit2x if you like. And we can look at exactly what happened with the market cap. Bitcoin lost, BTC lost the market cap war. Everybody's busy building on their favorite altcoin and just because people want to print their own money and convince other people to buy it doesn't mean that Bitcoin is losing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm shocked to hear people applauding that. So Bitcoin is competing in the market place against altcoins and against fiat currency. And if you stop and think for a moment, look at it. Bitcoin had companies like Microsoft and Expedia and Dell Computer, and they were on a roll getting every sort of business all over across the planet accepting and using Bitcoin. And that adoption came to a screeching halt when the blocks became full. Not only did it come to a halt, it reversed. Companies that previously were accepting Bitcoin stopped accepting Bitcoin. That's a disaster those, for the adoption of cryptocurrency. Those companies accepting Bitcoin always bothered me. Expedia accepting Bitcoin. Microsoft People accepting using Bitcoin, Bitcoin bothers me. The them. reason why that bothered me, the reason why that bothered me is those companies don't give a shit about Bitcoin. When you send Bitcoin to those companies, they, they sell, sell it. it on the open market and drop the price. You think they care about the dollar? Companies Woo! want to use whatever is useful to them, and they're going to use the currency that's the most useful. Tone, and I would like... You did it! Tone has a response, and then if you could ask a right. question to Roger. Um, wait, Cryptocurrencies are meant to be used as currencies. If you, if the person you are sending your Bitcoin to don't care about it as a store of value, don't give, don't drop the price of Bitcoin. Don't give them the Bitcoin. Why? I don't use Purse.io personally. I don't need to be, you know. Hey, tell uh, When was the last time you bought something with Bitcoin? All the time. What did you buy most recently? With Bitcoin. Oh, I spend it all the time. I what did you buy most recently? I sell Bitcoin to people and buy cash, and I spend. You bought five. dollars with your Bitcoin most recently. Correct. I I, so I sell your I sell my Bitcoin. I sell my Bitcoin to people that care about Bitcoin. 
Okay. Oh, I, I will reply in that. Hey, you know why Bitcoin is losing the market cap war? It's because Bitcoin doesn't have a marketing department. Look how many people are wearing BCH clothes around here. Yeah, and so let's Look talk about that. Marketing them. All the hats and the Look. sunglasses and the BCH that we paid for to be Dash yeah. to our supplier. Correct. Correct. Finish response. Okay, question. I've been Finish. arguing with people all the time. Look at Dash. Look, Dash. How did Dash start? Right. Some guy instamined 20% of Dash for himself and had a lot of money to promote Dash. We're not and that, Dash. Oh, uh, Bitcoin Cash is just as bad. And then, um, and then that wasn't enough money for him. So he decided to take 10% of all the mining and feed it into his own little foundation so, to promote it more. And that was dollars, enough. what was the so last he, time? So he last time it. bought something physical. One second, tone. Roger. Um, finish up tone. So, so, so I do not like the government to know that I even have Bitcoin. So I will never spend my Bitcoin where my actual name is used in the transaction. So anytime someone is selling me Bitcoin gear, the watch that I was wearing that I just put down, I bought that in Bitcoin. If you're selling Bitcoin t-shirts, I'll pay you in Bitcoin for it. We'll sell I'll you pay, some. I'll only pay for physical products. I'll pay for VPN services. I'll pay for other services. But if I gotta put my name or my address, I don't use that. I have more respect for Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin should be used peer to peer, not through some government system. Thank you, Tom. Roger? So here's an example of practicing what you preach. All these hats you see people wearing, they were bought with Bitcoin Cash. The sunglasses were bought with Bitcoin Cash. These pants I'm wearing were bought on purse.io with Bitcoin Cash. The socks and the shoes, Bitcoin Cash on purse.io, and even my underwear. With Bitcoin. Well, Roger, but here the only the thing I'm wearing that wasn't bought with Bitcoin right. Cash is my Bitcoin well, Cash T-shirt. Well, as Jihan Wu gave it to well, me. But, here, but, but my point, you're actually in my point, right? You are. You have a store. You believe in Bitcoin Cash. So when people pay you in Bitcoin Cash, you're not immediately selling it on the open market for fiat currency. Is that correct? Of course not, because I want exactly. the entire world to exactly. crypto currencies as currencies for every transaction, every paycheck, every bill, everything, every day of the year in every country. That's the goal. Okay, last two minutes, I'm gonna let the gentleman cash it out and then I am calling it, I will let you know. Tone, I'll let you start. Well, I was gonna say, see, you're putting yourself in a position of a business that respects cryptocurrency. When you're paying to a business that doesn't respect cryptocurrency, that's not gonna do anything to your currency Tone, other than drop the price. You don't respect cryptocurrency as a currency. You think it's a crypto store of value. That's the difference. I think that if you're gonna scale, you have you cannot put the most fundamental properties of Bitcoin at risk. Tone, do you think scales, reliable transactions are a fundamental property of Bitcoin? If they are done in a dangerous way to even give the people an idea that the unconfiscatability, censorship resistance are being threatened do you know a single because person? of the incompetence of your scaling model, do you know a single then no person one will ever have their Bitcoin Cash or even altcoin transaction in commerce censored. So Bitcoin Cash, because they have no competent developers, haven't made any serious changes onto their protocol. They are still doing Can you answer my question, Tone? Every question was, do you know anybody using Bitcoin Cash that's had their transaction censored? Absolutely not. You're still... No, that, you're still hold on. I know more than I can count that have their transactions censored on BTC. Okay. We're, the Mimpu was full and, full and their transactions were dropped. Because of you and spam. Okay. That's we're, a lie. We're at two minutes. I'll let Roger take the first question from the audience. It's uh, not on. You can use mine and then uh, Tone will respond. Bitcoin Cash is functioning great. They haven't made any changes. They're still using core code. Uh, One of the examples. They I just doubled the block. Hi. Uh, 32 times the block size. One, two, uh, Even more technologically dangerous. My name's Lori. Are you a technologically competent company. person to evaluate right, that tone? I have a question for both. I've interviewed enough of them to be able to speak competently about the issue. Tone and Roger. Roger goes first. Uh, I have a question for both of you, actually. So um, I'm not currently a Bitcoin investor or anything. I'm, I'm new to this world. And I was considering yesterday, you know, thinking about getting into it. But what I've just seen on stage just looks like a, a, a real shouting fest, and it's making me nervous. And I'm, I feel. I agree. May I? May, 
Yeah, I, uh, my question is, um, I came here to find out about the politics and the vision of cryptocurrency, so I'm wondering if you can both tell me why I should believe in it, having seen what I've just seen. All right, one minute answer. So you heard two people on stage here. One, Tom Bates here, said he's never switching anything from BTC ever. I will use absolutely any tool I have available to me to bring more economic freedom to the entire world, whether it's Bitcoin, Cash, or anything else. I don't care what it is as long as it works. If it's useful, I'm going to use it. And that's why I'm here promoting Bitcoin Cash, because it's the most useful cryptocurrency for the entire world. And I wish the BTC camp good luck. But you're on the wrong economic path to bring you more economic freedom to the world because a peer-to-peer -peer electronic store value, I don't see how it's going to do that, whereas it's very clear how a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system does it. So if you want more economic freedom to the world, take the tools that are available to you and use them to build that economic freedom for everybody in the world. If you want to have your store value club, go ahead. I'm not going to stop you, but that's not interesting to me. Okay. All right. Um, I'll, I'll have an answer as well. So again, I'm not sure what you're interested in, but were you interested in, in cryptocurrency as an investment? Or were you looking at cryptocurrency to use in your business, right? So if you are looking at cryptocurrency as something you're going to hold for the longer term and use it when you have to or use it when you need to, then you have to do a lot of research and decide where are you going to put your money? Because the only cryptocurrency that I have seen so far that is worthy of holding for more than a day is Bitcoin, the real Bitcoin, the one that's worth seven thousand dollars today, or sixty-three hundred, or whatever, right? Because I believe that holding on to that Bitcoin will you will preserve your value. Putting your dollars into any other crypto, you can sure you can buy any cryptocurrency whether it's Bitcoin Cash, whether it's, I can name a dozen others. If you're just gonna buy it and immediately spend it, who cares? But if you're actually gonna hold on to it, you really wanna buy the one that's actually gonna be around in a few years, the one that has most decentralized, the one that has the smartest people coding it in a decentralized way, and the one that the people voted for with their nodes to stay decentralized. Thank you so much. And we, uh, if I could ask quite a bit about the fundamentals, if I may. Let's move to one more question. Because Tone didn't answer the question. So, okay, we're moving to the next question. I'm not here to, I'm not here to tell you what to buy and what to sell. So, let's actually, to have a little fun, we will take four questions. So, both boys get to do two each. So, let's and I'd like to ask Tone to answer the, at least the next question. So Tone gets to answer the last one question. first. The third one, Roger, back to you. Fourth one, Tone can end on. And first. Yep, Roger's. to 35 but it's back to 50 plus yes of course but uh, why you are only blaming that on the block size not on greedy people who were buying size I'm blaming it on the problems with the block size came so if we look at the fundamental reasons why I invested in Bitcoin in 2011 is because all my life as a young man I was studying economics books and I studied the theory of what the origin of money is and how something becomes used as money and it has to have certain properties in order for it to become usable as money. It has to be durable, easy to recognize, easy to transport, limited supply, it has to have these specific characteristics to make it useful as money. So I read about the theories in the books and for anybody that doesn't know, I spent some time in federal prison in the United States and while I was in federal prison in the United States, I got to see firsthand within the prison economy that the theories I read about in the books were true when it came to the origin of money. I watched people start using tobacco, top ramen suits, and postage stamps as money in the prison. And there's an entire prison economy. And I had the theoretical evidence from the economics books, and then I had the empirical evidence right before my eyes from the imprisoned economy that the theories I read about in the economic books were right about what makes something useful as money and the origin of money. Thank you. And that's why I invested in Bitcoin in 2011 because it had those fundamental characteristics that it made it useful as money. Yep. And that's why I'm investing in Bitcoin Cash today because it, it has those fundamental okay, we're characteristics. Okay, one minute. Thank you. That and made it useful as so. money. BTC no longer does. Right. Thank you. So I heard from I heard from Charlie Schramm that when he was in prison, mackerel cans were used as money, and I would honestly rather have mackerel as a store of value over Bitcoin Cash. But to answer your question, um, to, to answer your question, 
Um, one of the reasons why that happened is because look at who was fighting uh, scaling. Look who was fighting against the core developers. It was the big companies, okay? Again, someone like Roger... The people using Bitcoin! Someone, someone, someone like Roger has a lot of influence. When he started buying old coins and shit coins, a lot of people followed. A company like Coinbase, they started, they, they didn't want to be a Bitcoin company anymore. They became a shitcoin company. Again, Coinbase, BitPay, all of these companies were all of a sudden, uh, Brian Armstrong has more Ethereum than he has Bitcoin. And, the, and these were the companies that wanted Segwit2x, and they didn't want just Bitcoin. They, they were greedy, they wanted to make more money, and they wanted to feed all of those old coins that are absolutely useless onto other people, and that's why the market cap dropped. Thank you, Tone. And for the next question, it will go to Roger first. So listening to you both guys, so I'm realizing what all the battles inside creating a lot of crisis. And if you, Roger, create your own solution, the reason why you, in most cases, was banned, because you are quite annoying and creating a lot of crisis. You create your own solution, but you're still attacking the Bitcoin. People are free to choice. You say that. You're not the company, you're not the government, and people make choice what currency they will use. You're providing another one possibility, but right now you're creating the campaign, and this creating a lot of annoying crisis. How I see, and this is a scary people. Supporting the cryptocurrency, they think it's a can choice. Everyone can choose. It can be Ethereum, it can be but So why you so seriously attacking the Bitcoin? So Bitcoin Cash has the fundamental characteristics that make it more useful You make your own decision and you you can, can create the Satoshi coin. So I, that's why Bitcoin Cash has more Bitcoin laid out and write a blog post or make a video or give a talk on it at some point. Thank you for your Bitcoins, including uh, Bitcoin Cash, but in this environment, it's still a little bit difficult to do. Eventually, uh, last question. This is going to go to Tom. So, first of all, thanks uh, for both of you for you know contributing to the free boss. Uh, the thing is, I, I, we just came back from the Lightning Hack, hack Day in Berlin, and I, I feel like uh, some of the, the steps that are happening with the Lightning Network are really happening quickly now. And I feel like Bitcoin, the BTC version, it, it just needs some t extra time. And, and uh, you know, I wish as a company we run Rolltorrent was really hard, because we, we started the company with this premise like, oh, quick transactions, cheap, and this and that. And during this time, we had to bend ourselves to make it work and a lot of business models fail because they build on that but I think though they're coming back because there's this time in between where the Lightning Network will uh, really some of the use cases are amazing like really really quick being able to take orders straight from the order book with, uh, without trusting the exchange to be able to send a transaction and snap an order as a market taker really quickly but while keeping custodian ship of your private keys is, is, is wonderful so I think you know what, what's your what's your take on the Lightning Network being able to in the future do do all these? Tone first, and then Roger on this one. All right, so going to do a podcast, getting a bunch of different Litecoin developers from all different Litecoin implementations on one nice two three. months ago when Jimmy and I were talking about it. Jimmy, do I have to create a lightning node in order to use lightning because that's 
node. It's not crazy difficult, but it's difficult enough. You gotta download the entire history of the Bitcoin blockchain. You gotta connect it to your router directly. You gotta change some settings. You gotta open some ports. It's not very clear. To go through all that challenge to use the Lightning Network, that's gonna be a disaster. Lightning node. It's not the same node. Scale to thousands of transactions a second. It will crush Visa. It should be in the end of the month. Whenever somebody feels like it, they will settle. Now, the reason why it's taking so long is because it needs to be done right. You can't mess up. trillion dollar market cap soon. It's not a toy. It's not move fast and break things. That might be great for your little website, move fast and break things. Even my YouTube, youtube.com goes down. But uh, you can't do that with Bitcoin. You gotta take your time and you gotta get it right. Thank you. Roger, response? Uh, I'm not sure of your name, but I, I wanna thank you for mentioning Free Ross. Uh, that's an example of the horrible things that are happening in the world. Free Ross, free every single person that's in prison for victimless crimes. Every single one. If there's no victim, there's no crime. And that's why I'm so excited about cryptocurrencies being the tools that we can use to empower individuals to say no to violent people that want to use violence against peaceful people. And in regards to your question about the Lightning Network, I am more than happy to use anything that's useful. And I look forward to the day in which the Lightning Network is useful in commerce, and I will gladly use it. So thank you for contributing to that. Woo! Thank All you, right. Roger. And, and if I can add one last thing, I'm, I'm out of time, everybody. I have to check out off the boat. So thank you all very, very, very much. Thank you, Tone. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you for your question. Oh, oh, I'll, try, I'll try and answer the last hey, one. One last one, and then that's it. I think should also be more private. Last but, question, sir. But yeah, I've got a question. Go right. off. All right. One minute each. So before you guys uh, failed a little bit to answer the question about what the movement is about, and that's fine. It's a heated debate, but it's a human rights movement if you think about the core values. So one Bitcoin, you can give away one one hundred million of a Bitcoin, one Satoshi. How about all of us here who have decent amount of Bitcoin? We give 100 million people one Satoshi each because your argument is all based on adoption. Adoption for adoption, adoption for price. Why don't we be philanthropists and not evangelists and stop wasting our money on these fucking cruises? And we've already built the exact system he's talking about. If you head on over to free.bitcoin.com, we will give anyone anywhere in the world some free Bitcoin cash right now today on chain, something that's impossible to do on BTC now. Okay, and tone, response? I guess, I don't wanna, I don't wanna sound insensitive, but, um, thank you all very much. Can I ask you guys just one question? I'm sorry, I never ask questions. I, I have one, one question. more forever, but if you send me an email, I'll reply by just add on to that a lot. Well, the question is this. I went on the cruise the other day and the guy said, what's this Bitcoin company? How do I find out about it? Bitcoin.com. I casually said Bitcoin.com, but I felt a little bit weird about that because that's not the Bitcoin that I know. And I feel like it's a little bit deceptive. How do you, like, how do you deal with that? I don't think you're a bad person, but why do you accept that people who are going to look for Bitcoin are gonna end up at Bitcoin.com and think Bitcoin Cash is Bitcoin? So it's very simple because Bitcoin Cash is Bitcoin. And I gave clear evidence and logic and reason why the case, that's the case yesterday on the cruise. Hopefully that video will be on YouTube tomorrow. It's the first time I've given that presentation publicly. Please watch it and I'd love to check it out. We've known each other for years. I'd love to have a conversation with you about that later. Thank you all. Sorry I have to run. I'm just going to add one, one response and then we're today, going. today you were willing to bet $1 million on a stupid fucking dick bull in Tom. Hey, all right. Uh, response. No, seriously. This... No, sir. Response to okay. the honor and then we're done. No, sir. Donate that to no. someone in need. Sir, 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 sir. Response. No, we're done. I'm just going to do a what final response. Hey, sir. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Well, final response. All right, so we have the last response. I agree. I find it very, this is why I'm here on stage. Um, I initially turned down this debate because I didn't want to make it a skeptical a spectacle. I didn't want to give Vlad Roger the stage because it's going to be on my YouTube channel, seen by a lot of people. But I feel like I have to because people are getting confused and they do end up going to Bitcoin.com and buying Bcash thinking that it's Bitcoin. 
Now, to answer the other question, to answer the question on giving away a Satoshi to a hundred million billion people, um, I don't think that's a good idea. Um, I know everyone wants to be a philanthropist. I'm going to go down to Venezuela. I'm going to give every single person in Venezuela a hundred dollars in Bitcoin. And honestly, I don't think that's the right way to do it. I really, really don't. I think giving away your Bitcoin to people that don't understand it, all that will happen is that Bitcoin will probably be lost permanently or that Bitcoin will immediately be sold. The best way to do it is to educate people. People need to understand it before they buy it. I used to I used to be like Roger and every single person I see I would give away like you know two to five dollars worth of Bitcoin. I stopped doing that years ago. I'm like, you know what, Bitcoin is too important to lose another Satoshi. We need as many of them around as we can. Um, and I only give Bitcoin now to people that actually respect it. Thank you guys, thank you, it was fantastic. Alright. Uh, no, that's it guys. I, I, th I think that's it for me as well. If there's still time, I'd love to go to shore and check out Ibiza. Everybody that was Stone Bays and thank Roger Bear, previously Sajani Song and Roger Bear, thank you so much.